that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no killed. Way. Throughout the course of the franchise, there's been a lot of finales where it felt like a double crowning could have been an option. Like Manila and Raja on season 3 who had identical runs in the competition. Or Bianca and Adore who had the first tie to ever be filmed as an alternate ending. For a while, it seemed like a possibility that was never going to actually come to fruition. Because to many, while it seemed like an interesting idea, it didn't feel like something that people would actually be satisfied by if it happened. That was of course, until All Stars 4 happened. Monet Exchange and Trinity the Tuck will always have a special connection because they were the first and currently the only pair to have both been declared the winners of the all-star season they competed in. Something that was of course a controversial decision to make, with some people feeling that politics came into play when choosing who would win. But how did we get to the point in the franchise where there was so much pressure on who would be the next queen to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? In this video, I'm going to explore the journeys of Monet Exchange and Trinity the Talk on RuPaul's Drag Race, how their paths would inevitably cross on All-Stars 4, and the legacy that they built in the years that followed. But before we start, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT for updates on future content. Now, let's begin. Prior to All Stars 4, Monet and Trinity were still fairly new alumni in the drag race world, with Trinity first competing on season 9 that aired in early 2017. Trinity didn't have the best start when the cast was announced, mostly because of the questionable promo look that we got from her, which many felt was one of the most underwhelming in a cast filled with stunning looks. But as it turns out, Trinity has said that she unfortunately fell victim to the stylist on set who had a tendency to make things look really unappealing, which resulted in this. However, despite not getting much attention from the fans in the preseason, once the episode started to air, it all began to change. Trinity is kind of the first queen to be labeled a pageant queen who actively fought against the stigmas that viewers had placed on pageant queens, which tended to be perceived as boring because their drag supposedly didn't push boundaries and they were too focused on being perfect all the time. But Trinity showed us through a good portion of the challenges that she wasn't afraid to be silly, which resulted in her success within the competition, ultimately landing her in the top four of the season. Going into the season nine finale, while the hype for Trinity's win wasn't as big as Shea Coulee or Sasha Velour, there was still a decent amount of people that wanted Trinity to take the crown. And when Trinity lip synced against Peppermint, it was the dawn of a new era in the format of Drag Race. Trinity, despite having the second best track record of the finalists, was eliminated by Peppermint who had the worst track record of the four queens. Shortly after the season, Trinity was also offered a chance to return for All-Stars 3, but rejected the invitation since she had a successful run on season 9 and was booked and blessed for months to come. So she decided she'd put the time to work on herself and build her brand. And so before we knew it, a year would pass and in early 2018, World of Wonder had announced the new batch of season 10 queens which featured Monet Exchange. Not only did Monet have arguably the best promo look of the cast, but she was also part of a season where the new batch of queens really understood how they needed to market themselves while on the show, in order to make themselves memorable to the viewing audience. Monet has said that when she went on season 10, her goal wasn't really to win, but instead to just make it as far as possible to create a solid fan base for herself. And that's exactly how it ended up going for her. On episode 1, her sponge dress, while hideous, served as a catalyst from the jump of the season for her to create a gimmick out of, incorporating sponges into her brand for the next couple years. And even though the first half of the season was sort of a rocky run for her, with Monet landing in the bottom two for two episodes in a row. Her lip sync against Dusty Ray Bottoms is something that to this day she's remembered for. Yet probably her biggest detriment was her runway outfits that didn't always translate to the audience or the judges in the way that she had hoped for. But once it was all said and done, Monet would end up placing sixth place after losing her lip sync against Cameron Michaels. And she left the season not winning any challenges and forced to share her elimination moment with Tyler Oakley. So clearly she deserved another opportunity to redeem herself. Shortly after her elimination, there was a small amount of fans that had pointed out that Monet was the third black queen in a row to be eliminated on season 10, something that they blamed on the production of the show for giving preference to other queens. But when asked about this by Joey Nolfi from Entertainment Weekly, Monet responded by saying that RuPaul's Drag Race is one of the most racially diverse reality shows that exist at the moment, and always creates a cast of queens that cover a wide variety of groups within the community. And that in regards to her being the third black queen in a row to go home, it's just something that is circumstantial and not at all related to race, but that instead, it is the fans who are actually the most racial. Using the example of how usually every season, the queens of color tend to be the least followed from the fan base. Monet said just a couple months before going to film All Stars 4 that she was fine with being eliminated on season 10 because she would much rather hold the title of being the first queen of color to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And subsequently, production actually didn't take long before they contacted Monet, as just one week after the airing of Monet's season 10 elimination, production 
Kardashian reached out to Monet to ask her if she'd be interested in competing on the upcoming All Stars 4 season, to which Monet immediately said yes and ended up being cast. Going into All Stars 4, it's hard to imagine the top two that was going to come from this season. While it's true that Trinity the Tug had shown a lot of versatility on season 9, earning three solo wins, Monet Exchange didn't have the best run in terms of challenges, but was a solid performer with a good original placement on her season. To top it off, Monet, along with Mo Hart, were the two newest Rue girls out of the whole cast, which made them in a lot of people's eyes sort of the inexperienced ones who haven't had a long time to really find themselves in their drag careers. On All Stars 4 Episode 1, Monet and Trinity had completely opposite trajectories, with Trinity landing in the top two while Monet was in the bottom three, after her vocal cords malfunctioned and her live singing performance. People hiding on the cover. But she quickly redeemed herself when in the following episode, she was in the top two alongside Valentina. Yet one of the more relevant storylines of the season came at the end of episode four, when Monet Exchange and Latrice Royale were placed in the bottom two, resulting in Mo Hart choosing to eliminate Latrice, while also squeezing in any possible catchphrase to further her own brand. The person I chose, they are sickening. They are stunning. Brown cows. They stunning. really do give you the ooh ah, ah sensation. I chose the truth. Latrice Royale's elimination on All Stars 4 is an interesting one, because after Manila Luzon tried her best to save Latrice, Mo Hart would end up winning the lip sync, choosing to save Monet Exchange by eliminating Latrice. But what also played into Mo's favor was that Monet had a better track record than Latrice, so it was easy to justify her decision and save her friend. Yet this elimination would be very significant to the progression of Monet Exchange in the rest of the competition. And it also felt like a fair decision, because Latrice had a history of blaming other contestants for her performances. Like on season 4 in the Snatch Game where she felt that the level of unprofessionalism was far too much, with how most of the contestants ended up going wild. Or on the All Stars 4 Snatch Game where she blamed Gia Gunn, and even broke out of character to address Gia's tomfoolery. And in the Jersey Justice episode, Latrice blamed Monet and Mo Hart for stealing the scene, because she didn't want to intrude under performances by trying to insert herself into the scene. So in a way, it did feel like it was Latrice's time to go, which she got to do wearing one of the many gowns that she brought to the season. So as we know, Manila's decision to try to eliminate Monet obviously came back to bite her, when Monet clearly was never going to live that down. And most of the queens now saw her as a wild card in terms of selecting queens to go home, since just a week prior, Manila had voiced her stance to Trinity on heavily considering to eliminate Valentina over Gia Gunn, out of the fact that she was the bigger competition. So really, it was only a matter of time before people began to place a target on her. But it was still shocking to see Naomi Smalls eventually make such a bold move when she did decide to eliminate Manila. By the time we got to the finale of All Stars 4, there was a lot of theories made surrounding who production actually wanted a crown for the season. Some felt that Trinity should win because she had the better track record, while others felt that Monet should win because she not only deserved it, but it was also time for the Hall of Fame to have more diversity. It's also important to note that for All Stars 3, there was a tie filmed between Kennedy and Trixie, but for some reason, they didn't do the same for All Stars 4, presumably because they weren't planning a double crowning until the season began airing. So no one was really expecting a twist like that to happen, yet ultimately, as the final lip sync between Trinity the Tuck and Monet Exchange concluded, all of a sudden, Rue announces that for the first time in Drag Race history, we have a tie, followed by some really awkward editing, which made it clear that this was a last minute decision. In a way though, even Monet and Trinity's live reactions to the double crowning showcased how different both of their personalities were, with Monet instantly being happy about the tie, while Trinity was visibly confused but quickly gained her composure once it was announced that they would both be receiving $100,000. Although some Nancy Drews pointed out that the two crowns that were given to Monet and Trinity were not the same crown, and had different designs to them, with Trinity the Tuck's crown being the one that actually appeared in the All Stars 4 finale, which of course led some fans to speculate that this could mean something, but really, it probably doesn't mean anything, and was really just a byproduct of having to get a last minute crown. And it's also better that they had different designs anyway, so that it sort of made them more special for each of the queens. Needless to say, many people were upset about the way that All Stars 4 ended because it felt like a cop out from production to not choose one winner. Both queens have admitted that while there was a part of them that initially had mixed feelings about the double crowning, mostly because they wanted to have bragging rights of saying they were the only person to win the season, it ultimately didn't take long before they had accepted it and were actually pretty happy about how groundbreaking the moment was, even if most people took some time to get behind it. Trinity also added that she doesn't feel that the tie devalued the title of winning at all, because both her and Monet come from completely different drag backgrounds. So there's a lot of meaning in each of their 
spots in the Hall of Fame, with Monet pointing out that the tie allowed for all of the fans to be happy. Because regardless of whether you were Team Trinity or Team Monet, both queens now had the resources available to them to be able to build on their careers. In regards to the outrage that had been made by fans over the lack of diversity in the Hall of Fame, Trinity has said that she wasn't afraid of the backlash that would come from fans if she had potentially been the solo winner of All Stars 4. Because she felt that every winner that had been crowned on Drag Race up until that point deserved it because of how they performed throughout the season, and not at all tied to their race. And that fans should focus on viewing the competition by the talents that the queens possess rather than what their race is. Subsequently, Monet felt that many of the Drag Race fans are super intense, and sometimes pick up on things that not everyone is paying attention to. Like how when she first heard what fans were saying, she was shocked to realize that there hadn't been a black winner in the Hall of Fame yet. But that to her, it didn't seem like it had anything to do with race. Because the show has always been super diverse, with the initial seasons of Drag Race crowning queens of color for three seasons in a row. So she's grateful to be the first black winner in the Hall of Fame, but that the show didn't really need to prove itself as diverse because it's always been that way. Although speaking of controversies, Trinity Monet would end up having to face their fair share of drama throughout the course of their careers. One of them was the infamous beef between Monet Exchange and Gia Gunn. During the press tour for All Stars 4, we had queen like Naomi Smalls who were calling out certain patterns that they had been noticing in the queens who were picked in the Hall of Fame. Um, blonde and white? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Facts are back! <laughs> but we also noticed a growing tension coming from Gia Gunn against Monet Exchange. A crusty makeup as well. Horrible fashion. Bob the Drag Queen shadow. According to Gia, after All Stars 4 had been announced, there was a lot of headlines made about Gia for being the first openly trans woman to compete on the show. But Monet had gone to Twitter to say that Peppermint was actually the first openly trans queen to compete on the show, which Gia felt discredited the doors that she had opened as the first official trans queen to be female presenting at all times on screen. This created a distaste in Gia towards Monet. So, in many press interviews, she was throwing shade left and right. Gia was also upset that after All Stars 4 episode, Three, where Gia flopped terribly when she played Jenny Bowie on the Snatch Game, Monet ended up contacting the real Jenny to be a guest on her YouTube channel. And Jenny discussed how she was super upset about the way that Gia had decided to portray her. To Gia, it felt unnecessary that Monet had gone out of her way to contact a celebrity that obviously was not going to be happy with the portrayal. Then again, Trisha Paytas said that she actually enjoyed Sugar's portrayal of her in the season 15 Snatch Game. So at this point, it's kind of hard to predict how celebrities are going to react. Anyways, by the time the winner of All Stars 4 was announced, Gia had tweeted out, quote, There was only one winner in my eyes from the beginning, and that was Trinity the Tuck. However, I am happy for Monet Exchange as well and wish you ladies the best on this next chapter in your life. What an amazing moment for all of us to have two winners at the same time. Yet Monet ended up clapping back on February 17th, 2019, with a tweet referencing Gia and bragging about winning $100,000, only for Gia to reply, quote, Congrats, now you can go and invest on some real looks in Eleganza. By May 2019, the drama had sort of reignited when Gia was a guest on Hey Queen, and once again spoke about her distaste towards Monet Exchange, which got even more heated when in June 2019, Monet called out Gia directly from her own talk show called The Exchange Rate. Or is it because your only claim to fame is having a wonky eyelash? Oh. Oh. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a minute to celebrate our similarities, shall we? Here we go. I was on the 10th season of RuPaul's Drag Race. You placed 10th on your season of Drag Race. I'm on the third episode of my very own talk show. You were sent home on the third episode of a TV show. Listen, instead of worrying about my terrible looks, how, but you, how about you concern yourself with learning about Nancy Pelosi and dismantling your own counterfeit activism? Well, that's a pretty big word there. Let me break it down for you. Activism, the action of using vigorous campaigning to bring about positive political or social change. You hear that, girl? Positive. <laughs> What was clear about this whole situation was that there needed to be some sort of resolution between these two iconic queens. So Monet Exchange ended up giving the fans what they wanted. The drama between the two culminated in Monet actually inviting Gia as a guest on her talk show so that they could discuss their now infamous beef together. And honestly, it was everything that we needed at the time. This is one of the most entertaining interviews surrounding All Stars 4 because it starts off with both queens playing a game based on giving compliments to each other with whatever picture pops on screen, including a picture of Gia with a wonky eyelash, with Monet actually complimenting Gia nonstop and Gia giving us hilarious moments like this. Oh yeah. Now this is when I saw you and you ignored me. 
but I loved her outfit. Although, while there was some shade thrown between them, you could tell that both queens were being really respectful towards one another. Subsequently, in regards to their beef, Gia said that once All Stars 4 started, she began to get a bunch of recognition for her achievement in being the first openly trans woman to be on the show, which she took a lot of pride in, and it was the only reason that she decided to even go on the show, but that perhaps she should have done it for herself rather than being a pioneer in the drag community. But the temptations of opening doors had become far too much for Gia, and the door of All Stars 4 was particularly appetizing. The tweet the Monet made said, quote, Peppermint was the first trans woman on Drag Race and not Gia Gunn, which Gia felt Monet was going out of her way to take away from her moment. And it felt like Monet was being a hater, but she also understood that Monet was just standing up for her New York City sister. But nevertheless, that's why she had this taste towards her. Monet argued that it felt that people praising Gia as the first trans contestant was diminishing the work that had been done by past trans contestants, and says that Peppermint was in fact openly trans when she went to compete on season 9. But Peppermint wasn't introduced to viewers in that way. While fans that had followed her prior to Drag Race were aware of her gender identity, the general audience didn't really find out until halfway through season 9 when Peppermint revealed to the other queens that she was a trans woman and the struggles that have come from it. Gia still did make history by being the first trans girl to be female presenting in her confessional looks and in the workroom outfits. But it's also understandable what Monet was trying to say about how it sort of made Peppermint's achievement seem lesser. But really, I think they are both just separate achievements that were building blocks that would eventually manifest in season 14, where by the end of the season, there was three additional queens that had come to terms with their gender identity, and also came out as trans, making the season have a total of five trans contestants and Carrie Colby reign supreme. By the end of the interview, Gia ended up apologizing to Monet about her behavior, and actually broke down crying, feeling that life is too short to have bad blood with people. All I learned from this is that even on the exchange raid, Gia will still deliver the drama and blessed rating. Moving on, in early 2019, Monet got into some drama just a couple months after the airing of All Stars 4, where Murray and Peter, a famous production company known for their tours, news broke out that they ended up firing Monet Exchange from the company after she left the tour temporarily to go fulfill some other business obligations, which was an opportunity to be in a Madonna music video. This would end up exploding into a lot of online drama, with many fans and queens siding with Monet. But there was still a lot of missing pieces to the story. Eventually, as more news outlets covered the story, we got a clear picture of the situation, which was that once Monet got the Madonna offer, she contacted Murray and Peter to see if she could leave the tour to do a gig. But it was denied because Monet had only given just a couple hours of notice before a show, so there wasn't enough time to find a queen to replace her. However, Monet ended up hopping on a plane and left to fly to Los Angeles to do the Madonna music video anyway. And it didn't take long before Monet went off on Twitter about the management of the tour, and how she has only five times had to cancel an appearance due to important filming opportunities. Marie and Peter ended up responding through some news outlets that contacted them, and were set in their stance that they had done nothing wrong and were only going by the contractual obligations that were expected out of their queens. From a business perspective, having an opportunity like Madonna, despite how good it sounds, it's not a good enough excuse to cancel a show just hours before it happened. Yet as conversations online continued, other Rue Girls began chiming in, such as Bob the Drag Queen who urged queens that they should create their own touring company instead of relying on crappy production companies that just take advantage of the queens. Following Monet's departure from the Marie and Peter tour, Trini the Tuck, who was also part of the tour, decided to quit as well, in solidarity for her twinner, Monet Exchange, which was honestly a pretty impressive move that showed how Trinity really valued her legacy that she had built with Monet. Anyways, as the drama was going on, other Rue girls that had worked with Marie and Peter had come forward with their own stories about their management style. One of the more compelling stories came from Ginger Minge, who had been working on the tour for many months, alongside her husband CJ, who was part of the behind the scenes stage production. But while touring, Ginger ended up receiving a filming opportunity. But fortunately for her, her contract with Marie and Peter allowed for her to miss a couple of the tour dates in the event of a filming opportunity. Yet despite Ginger doing everything right, Marie and Peter allegedly ended up telling Ginger that they didn't want the audience getting confused by having them rotate who the host of the tour would be. So they made her choose between the filming opportunity or continuing on the tour resulting in Ginger choosing the filming opportunity and ultimately getting fired. Yet her husband CJ would continue working for a couple months more, until he had to abruptly leave the tour to travel to Florida due to a family emergency, where Ginger's grandmother had been hospitalized and passed away, which also ended in CJ getting fired from the tour. But according to Murray, CJ had booked a flight and said that he would return by Friday afternoon. But not only had he not shown up to work on Friday, but he didn't provide any update about
about his situation. They even tried contacting him on social media, but to no avail. So really, at this point, who knows what happened? But it was clear that many queens were unhappy with their touring management. Things began to cool down when Monet quickly got a spot in the more highly acclaimed production tour, Work the World. The funny part is that all of this drama happened because Monet had moved the mountains just to be able to go film this Madonna music video, only for the video to come out just a couple months later, and not only was Monet only in it for like half a second, but it's not even a shot that's dedicated to her. If you blink, you might miss her. Also, just as an update, in 2023, Monet is actively touring with Murray and Peter, so it's clear that they buried the hatchet and grown from this experience. But I still will never look at Madonna's God Control video the same again. People hiding on the cover. So, when Monet gets into drama, she's typically gotten a lot of support from the fans. But the one time that this didn't happen was during the fiasco of Meghan McCain. It all began when Monet, alongside Nina West from season 11, went on The View to celebrate the birthday of Meghan McCain. Yet during the moment, they also named Meghan an honorary Rue girl, with Nina handing her a figurine of RuPaul and Monet giving her pink boots. This was controversial because Meghan McCain had some pretty shady political takes, with her diehard Republican husband, Ben Dominique, who was the publisher of an anti-gay website called The Federalist. Fans felt that it was sort of weird for them to be attaching someone who endorses the behavior of homophobic ideologies with RuPaul's Drag Race. Although there was some people that felt it was unfair to frame Meghan McCain for the horrible things that her husband has done. Despite the fact that she's conservative, she's been very vocal about her beliefs surrounding marriage equality, and has been given awards for her activism, and she's also part of the GLAAD National Board of Directors. Yet probably the only thing that one could say Meghan loves more than her activism for the LGBT community is her love for her conservative husband who actively promotes hateful rhetorics against the LGBT people, and works his way against providing them with equal rights and protections. Basically, the conversation was split between people feeling that Meghan was one of those progressive conservatives, but clearly has no moral backbone when she's married to a bigot, so it's hard to say what her true beliefs are. Therefore, fans felt that it was an insult to have her tied to the Drag Race legacy in any way, when there's so many queens out there that would do anything to be acknowledged by the show. Monet and Nina responded to criticism by replying to tweets with some zingers. Nina West ended up making a series of tweets where she addressed the fans who were upset, saying that they weren't allowing for conversations to happen around LGBT issues, adding that The View inviting drag queens to their show in the first place was a huge achievement, and exposes new audiences to drag, and people shouldn't be so adamant to close themselves off to someone without hearing them out so that they can reach some sort of conclusion. Even other queens started to chime in, like Katya, who said, quote, gross, or Darian Lake, who always throws the best shade with quote, if I take one of those which Rue girl are you quizzes and end up with Meghan McCain, I'm quitting. The funny part is that Detox was also supposed to be part of the appearance, but was not able to do it because her flight ended up being delayed. So she sort of dodged the bullet in that regard. Yet I remember during this time, Monet and Nina West were actually under a lot of heat from the whole situation. Which is why I think Monet has mentioned in her podcast recently that fans are fickle, because they can be telling you how much they love you as a person only for a couple weeks to pass by and they find something to get mad at you about, which is a fair statement to me. Now, in regards to Trinity to the Tuck, she would end up being part of what is probably one of the most talked about scandals from the past couple years, which was the infamous drama about the She Devil by Night Reddit account that she accidentally confirmed was hers, or at least implied it was hers when replying to a tweet that asked her if the account was hers, <laughs> only for people to go through all the comments that she had made on the Drag Race subreddit. Supposedly, it seems that Trinity did not realize that Reddit allows for anyone to view your history of comments. Otherwise, any sane person wouldn't have actively given out their account name like she did. Trinity ended up retracting her statement, denying that the account was ever hers, and that this whole situation was a misunderstanding and a mistake. Yet, after the initial confirmation, it was hard to know what was the truth, since many of the comments that were being made by the account correlated to a lot of things that defended Trinity the Tuck, and sometimes even badmouthed her fellow competitors on the season. There was also moments where the account allegedly stated that they were of a different race to further their points which created a bad taste for many of the fans against Trinity that still reverberates to this day. This didn't help Trinity's image to the fan base because she already didn't have a very good connection to sharing herself with the fans, so many didn't really gravitate her to begin with, and this was sort of the final nail in the coffin. On the other hand, Monet Exchange had been growing her platform on her podcast, as well as the exposure that she got from hosting her own talk show, and even the pit stop, so naturally there was a lot more supporters for Monet than Trinity, just because of how involved 
involved she was with the fans. Which then brings us to Trinity and Monet's return to the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise, when it was announced that both queens would be competing again for the first ever All Winter season. The way that Monet and Trinity approached their All-Star 7 run was perfect, which was to show to the fan base that despite being in a competition together again, they would play into the fact that they were both tied through the All-Stars 4 title by creating an alliance among themselves. While it's true that the alliance seemed to mostly benefit Monet, it was still a moment to showcase the friendship between the two queens. And honestly, part of me thinks that one of the queens that benefited the most from All Star 7 was Trinity the Tuck. Because for the most part, the Reddit drama had sort of defined her in terms of her relevancy with the fanbase. So now that All Star 7 was here, it was her chance to fix the perspective that many people had on her. I think I also fell victim to the lack of content that we had seen from Trinity in recent years, because I sort of underestimated her once the promo for the All Winter season was announced. But as the season aired, it was clear that Trinity is one of the most versatile queens that we've seen on the franchise, and the fact that she holds the title for the most amount of challenge wins is impressive in itself. Even by the time we get to the end of the season, when Monet chose Trinity to join her in the top four of the season over Jada Essence Hall, there was a part of me that was messy and sort of wanted Monet to break her alliance with Trinity just for the gag. But it's good to see that she was committed to her promise. And while the anticipated rematch ended in Monet exchange winning her lip sync against Trinity, they will still always be twinners no matter what. Essentially, the twist of having Monet and Trinity be the first twinners in Drag Race history was iconic in itself. But having another season where we got to see each of these queens shine on their own merit was a benefit to both these queens. It's sort of cool that in a way the term twinner is much more than just a nickname. Monet and Trinity will always hold that connection between the two, in a moment that while at the time it was sort of anticlimactic to watch, is now something that we can look back on with normality. And judging by the way both these queens would go on to slay All Star 7, it's clear that production made the right decision by crowning them both as winners. There's also a part of me that wonders if we were ever going to see a double crowning happen again in the show. Because at the end of the day, it is something that a good portion of the audience considers to be an underwhelming ending to a season. But what do you guys think? After seeing the way the legacies of Monet and Trinity had been tied together through Drag Race, would you be open to seeing this happen again with a new pair of queens? Let me know in the comments. I also wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad, we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, Wendell Norris Realtor, and Hendrix Health, TRT. And in the Green Squad, we have Azure, Emma Malander, Komen Ryder Furry, Franny Fishsticks, Edgar Allan Pup, O Nicole, The Only Sean, Soy Pablete, and LP. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon, the link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT for updates on future content, like this video, and comment below what you thought about it. Also, thank you so much for 50,000 subscribers, I wanted to make a video about it, but I ended up not doing it, but I do think it's so cool how much the channel has grown, and I can't wait to see how much it grows even more, so I'll see you guys next time.